All right, welcome back everyone. I'm Nick, this is Swiffle Thinking, and this is definitely one of the easiest videos in the series. Uh, in iOS 15, Apple introduced system materials to Swift UI. Now, we've had system materials in UIKit for a long time now, but we did not have them in Swift UI. So, super hyped to have them now in Swift UI. And in this video, we're just gonna very quickly go over uh, what they are, how to implement them. There's, I think, five options that we're gonna go through. Uh, these are basically backgrounds that we can put onto our views that they're not necessarily specific colors, but they are system materials that have a bit of a transparency to them. So it looks like a very natural looking background. And uh, if you put like an image or something behind the material, it will bleed through a little bit. So it will look very natural. Uh, these are the backgrounds that Apple actually uses in a lot of their apps. So like the Maps app or the FaceTime app. The backgrounds that you see there, those are made of system materials. So it's super easy. Let's jump into Xcode and get coding. What's up, everyone? I'm back in our Xcode project. We're in the Swiffle Thinking Bootcamp project. And today we're looking at the background materials that have been added to SwiftUI in iOS 15. These are awesome. Let's right click the navigator, create a new file. It's going to be a Swift UI view, and let's call this background materials bootcamp. Click create. This should be one of the easiest videos in the playlist. It probably did not need its own video because it's so easy to use, but I just wanted to show you guys this feature because I think Apple is pushing us to use it. They use it all the time in their apps. All right, so let's start by creating a very simple screen here. I'm gonna put a V stack on the screen. Let's add a spacer to push everything down. And then at the bottom, I'm just gonna add a quick V stack. Uh, this VStack, I will give a frame with a height. Let's do 350, maybe. And let's give it a background of color dot black. Let's add some text in here. It just says hi. And let's make this frame with a max width of infinity. And let's give this a corner radius of 20. And then on this whole VStack, let's just ignore the safe area for now so that we get it to the bottom. All right, corner radius, let's do maybe 30. And then let's give this whole thing a background. And I'm going to put an image in the background. And I have an image already in my assets folder from an earlier video in this course. I have an image called the rock that I'm going to reuse now. You can use any image. It does not really matter. We're just adding a background to the screen. You could even just use a color if you want here. But I'm going to use an image called The Rock, and there he is. But I'm gonna do any resizing on it. It's way bigger than the screen right now, but that's not what we're focused on. And what I wanna show you guys is that when we use these backgrounds like this, these colors, they are opaque. We can't see anything through this background image here. Now we could change the color to background.opacity of maybe 0.5, so we can start to see through some of it, and that looks decent but that doesn't look as professional and natural as some of the backgrounds that Apple uses in like the Maps app and the FaceTime app, and that's because they're actually using system materials. So instead of adding a color on the background, what we're gonna do is add a dot, and we're gonna look for the materials. So if I type in material here, we can see all of the completions that we get now. And these are new to SwiftUI and iOS 15. We've actually had these materials as well as a bunch of other materials in UIKit using something called the UI Visual Blur for a long time now, but they were not available in SwiftUI uh, until recently. So these are the only ones we get, but they are a pretty good variety. Let's start with just thin material. And the cool part about these is that you can kind of see through them. You Obviously we can't see through them, but we can see that the colors are kind of changing in the background here, uh, and the image is a bleeding through a little bit, which gives it a really professional kind of kind of feel here. So if I change this uh, high to maybe just a rounded rectangle, let's give it a frame with a width of maybe 30, a height of four. Let's see how that looks. Let's give it, let's push it to the top with another spacer. Maybe add some padding around it. Um, let's make this 50. 
So when you're in like the, the Maps app and there's a map back here, we get those pop-ups. Those pop-ups bleed through kind of like this. Same thing if you're on the FaceTime and you're FaceTiming someone and you have that pop-up at the bottom. There's a system material there that is covering all of those buttons and this is how they make the material. So we have a thin material, we have thick material, we have regular material, and probably my favorite one is the ultra thin material. And that is the most transparent, uh, the most transparent of these materials. We can see uh, a decent amount of the screen behind us, but of course we could still put buttons and stuff here that would be totally readable. Um, I just wanna quickly jump to the definition of these materials, just to quickly show you guys that in the documentation here, we can see these are only available in iOS 15. And here is the full list of the materials we have available. Regular material, thick material, thin, ultra thin, and ultra thick. Again, there are way more materials than this in the UI kit if we wanna convert stuff over, but uh, these cover probably most of the use cases that you'll ever need. So just wanted to quickly show you guys how to use them. Uh, here's our example. If, if we added a drag gesture to this view, we would pretty much have that same functionality that you see in the Maps app, in the FaceTime app, and a bunch of other apps. Uh, it seems like Apple is kind of pushing us to use these materials. I think they do look really cool, and I would highly recommend using them in your apps. All right, that's it for this one. Hope you guys enjoyed. As always, I'm Nick. This is Swiffle Thinking, and I'll see you in the next video.